So just a quick video today to show you how to set up an organization and talk about teams within GitHub and using those within education. So as I mentioned in the last video, we've got organizations down here that a member can be part of. So I'm currently part of two. This is the one that I'm working on at school at the moment. So it's an organization with a number of members. I've got a couple of teams set up down here that I'm sort of playing around with some different models of. And I've got all the repositories down here. Um, a couple of which are empty actually because changing more than a few things. So um, what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to try and create a new organization from the menu up here. And um, then just need to give it a name so I'm going to call mine SVC Sandbox and just type in my email address to link to that organization. Okay, now below that we've got some billing information. Now, the standard free service from GitHub gives you as many repositories as you like, but all of them have to be public, which means that anybody can see them, fork them, sort of observe comments that are going on between the users of that. Now, for most of the work I've done so far with GitHub, we've done things publicly. I'm quite happy with my pupils using this in a public way and actually having a, a positive online presence. There might be occasions where I want to, them to have a private repository, so for example control assessment where I don't want their code visible to other people, where maybe I'm doing some teamwork and I might create a repository for each team so that the code can't be seen between them to begin with. For now I'm going to choose open source, which is for free. Um, and then I've got some sort of other options so just for the time being at this point I can add some owners so currently I own it but let's say I was teaching this with another class or I wanted another teacher on board I might add them um, there's currently no one else at the school using this so I'm just going to add somebody else so I'm going to add ben, ben Nuttall from the Raspberry Pi Foundation stick him in there and click on finish and now this is my new uh, organization area I've got a few little tips and a few options down here um, but let, let's start off by looking at some of our settings. So if I go into down here, I've got Edit SVC Sandboxes Settings. Then I've got a number of settings. So I can name it, I can put an email on there and describe a URL, all the standard sort of profile things. Um, I've got a list of all my owners. So currently there's me, and I think the, uh, the request has probably gone to Ben to see if he wanted to become an owner. Um, and if I go back I've also got members and currently there's only me um, but I can start to do some other stuff within here now so what I can do is if I go in back into members in fact then I can start to add individual members so I need to know their username so your pupils if you're going to use it with pupils need to have signed up already um, I think it's really important with when you're setting it up with the pupils that they use usernames that you've specified because they can choose their own but if you've got to type in code, code wizard 43 and you know all these kind of other random names they've made up it becomes a bit of a faff so try and get them to create a name based on their school email account or something like that um, so I can create um, members in there I've also got up here I've got the option to create some teams currently the only team are the owners team and they have a certain level of access um, the way I've used Teams so far is I use Teams to signify like classes. So I might have my 10A class, have a brief description, and for now I'd probably stick with read access. If they've got write access, then obviously they can change the master copy of the code. It depends what you're doing with them, but most likely you want read. So we can create that team. And then obviously once we've got that team, we can start to add users to that team. Okay. Um, so that's kind of how, how you set up the organization on GitHub. The one thing I haven't mentioned, I we'll need to go back to, is the private repositories aspect. If you go to the GitHub education page here, okay, so the URLs at the top here, then they've recently unveiled a program where you can get free private repositories as educators. So you request a discount work your way through, fill in the form in, sort of say I'm a teacher and I want an organization account and I'm going to use it in the classroom and I'm going to apply it to this 
um, organization and then I can sort of talk a bit about my class how many repositories I want now I originally applied for 125 repositories which I thought at the time was quite a lot but the recommended sort of model from github or the model they're suggesting is that for each assignment or unit of work you have a private repository for each pupil so if I'm doing five units throughout the year and I've got a class of 30 I'm going to want 30 private repositories per unit which is 150 just for that one class now I don't quite know I mean we're not we're not using it in quite that way um, a lot of our work currently as I said earlier is is very public so I'm still sort of playing with what the right number is there I asked for 125 and, and they were pretty forthcoming with those there was no real problem um, so you work your way through I'm gonna, I'm gonna just ask for three though um, and then you have to verify your academic status you you know you can do some other stuff in descriptions put some information into your um, your request submit the request now that will take about two weeks so if you want to use it with your classes anytime soon you need to get that done so you've got a bit of lead time on there um, so that, that's pretty much it for this video uh, we've set up an organization we've added some team members or some um, owners um, so far we haven't created a repository but we'll talk a bit more about that in the next video